Good day everyone. I hope you're doing well. Today's video is on 10 interesting facts about Miles O'Brien from Star Trek TNG. I'll do a part 2 for him for being on Deep Space Nine. So now, let's get into it. Number 1. Miles O'Brien was born in Ireland Earth in September 2328. O'Brien claimed he could trace his ancestry back to the 11th century Irish King Brian Boru, whom he occasionally played in the Hollow Sweet program. Another notable O'Brien ancestor was Sean Olosis O'Brien. Number 2. O'Brien was proud of the fact that he was raised on real food as his mother believed that replicated food was less nutritious. When preparing meals for her family, his mother would handle and cook meat. O'Brien had two brothers. His mother passed away in 2368, and his father Michael remarried a year later, though Miles never met his new stepmother. His relationship with his father had been a somewhat rocky one during Miles' adolescence. Michael had pushed Miles to pursue his music career, making him practice the cello at least once a day, and was somewhat upset by his son's enlistment in Starfleet. When Miles was 17 years old, his father sent a recording of his work to the Albrin Music Academy. O'Brien declined the offer of admission to the Music Academy and enrolled in Starfleet against his father's wishes. The two later reconciled their differences and O'Brien's father was eventually extremely proud of his son and his accomplishments. Number 3. As a child, O'Brien had a morbid fear of spiders. Following a mission on Zara 4, where O'Brien was forced to make a critical repair in a Jeffreys tube containing Telerian hook spiders, he found that his fear had lessened, and he later kept a Locosia tarantula named Christina as a pet aboard the Enterprise D. Number 4 In 2345, at the age of 17, O'Brien joined Starfleet as an enlisted crewman, where he attended engineering school. As of Stardate 49648, O'Brien had served aboard a half a dozen starships, participated in 235 separate combat engagements, and been decorated by Starfleet on 15 occasions. Because of his impressive military record, O'Brien was recognized by Starfleet Formal Inquiry as an expert in starship combat. O'Brien's career was so well respected that Captain Kyo of the USS Odyssey considered the chief's experiences an asset before launching a rescue mission for Commander Benjamin Sisko in the Gamma Quadrant in 2370. Number 5. One of his first assignments was aboard the USS Rutledge under the command of Benjamin Maxwell, where he served as junior tactical officer during the Cardassian War. A year later, O'Brien was present at the aftermath of Setlik III Massacre, where his technical skill was useful in repairing a field transporter, allowing him and 13 other Starfleet personnel to escape a Cardassian patrol. This earned him a promotion to primary tactical officer. O'Brien also served as part of the squad to aid in the survivor of the massacre, as Cardassians were still patrolling the settlement. He helped a group of women and children, but was ambushed by two Cardassians. He was able to incapacitate one of them, but in fighting with the other one, he accidentally killed his assailant with a phaser passed to him, which was set to maximum. Until then, O'Brien had never killed anything or anyone. He even worried about swatting mosquitoes as a child and the incident left them with a deep-seated resentment towards Cardassians, bordering on outright racism on occasion. He often referred to them as Cardis. Many years later, he remarked to Glenn Darrow that it was not Cardassians that he hated, but rather the person he became because of them. Number 6 O'Brien transferred to the USS Enterprise D in 2364 with the rank of Chief Petty Officer under the command of Captain Jean-Luc Picard. During the Far Point mission, he was assigned as Relief Flight Control Officer. He also stood duty in the Security Department, but was most often seen working as Transporter Chief, where he was involved in, among other events, the rescue of Captain Picard from the Borg in 2367. Number 7 In 2367, 
Miles was forced to confront his former commanding officer when Captain Maxwell went rogue, launching attacks on Cardassian outposts and ships in spite of a pre peace treaty between Federation and Cardassia. O'Brien's knowledge of transporter systems allowed him to beam aboard Maxwell's ship, the USS Phoenix, while her shields were up, giving him a chance to reason with Maxwell, ultimately preventing further bloodshed. He married Keiko aboard the Enterprise on October 24th, 2367, and the couple had their first child, Molly, the following year. Number 8 During the Klingon Civil War, O'Brien also made use of his training as a tactical officer following Lieutenant Worf's resignation from Starfleet. As a result, he was heavily involved in the deployment and maintenance of the tachyon detection grid that ultimately decided the conflict. Number 9 In 2368, a quantum filament caused major damage to the Enterprise. Unable to communicate with the rest of the crew, O'Brien, together with Lieutenant Commander Deanna Troy, Ensign Rolaren, and Ensign Mandel, were trapped on the bridge, while his heavily pregnant wife Keiko was stuck in 10 forward. The quantum resonance of the filament caused a polarity shift in the ship's antimatter containment fields, leading to a progressive degeneration in the fields threatening the ship. Rowe suggested a saucer separation to save the primary hull while sacrificing the star drive section. O'Brien strongly opposed this plan and stated that it'd be a pretty cold-blooded thing to do. Eventually, thanks to his prowess in keeping the containment field stable long enough, Troy rejected Rowe's proposal and the antimatter Containment was fully restored by Commander Riker and Lieutenant Commander Data shortly before Keiko delivered her baby in 10 forward. Number 10 Later that year, O'Brien, along with Troy and Data, was taken over by an alien life form which forced them to take hostages to use as a bargaining chip in negotiating with Picard. Among the prisoners were Molly and Keiko O'Brien. Eventually, the life form left when it was discovered that the moon was actually a penal colony and that that was an attempt for the life form to escape. O'Brien had a very colorful Starfleet history and has been through a lot with the Cardassian Wars. Part 2 of Miles will be about his tenure in Deep Space Nine. So consider subscribing to the channel to get that video when it comes out. Take care and have a great day.